Hi, I'm Kay of CleverSomeday.com. I've been seeing lots of questions on how to make your foiling or engraving look solid, so that's what I want to show you in this video. Let me say right up front that it's easier and better to do this outside of Design Space, using Inkscape or Silhouette Studio, which are both free, or Surecuts a lot, which is a paid program. But the method I'll show you in this video is good for those of you who prefer to use just Design Space, those of you who are on a mobile device, or for when you want to fill Cricut images. As you probably already know, a foil tool, an engraving tool, or a pen can only make lines. So when you use any of these with a typical cut file, you get an outline of the design, which isn't usually what you want. The trick to getting a solid look is to fill the outline with many closely spaced lines so the tool goes back and forth just like a child coloring with crayons, only neater. I do want to warn you that the more lines you have, the longer it will take Cricut to run it. So keep that in mind as you choose whether and what to fill. To add lines in Design Space, which doesn't have a line fill feature, we're going to use a simple method I first posted about way back in 2009, and that is to start with a pattern of lines and slice our image with it. I've already done the hard part, creating the line pattern and putting it in a Design Space project, which I'm sharing with you. Go to the description of this video to find that link and open it in your web browser as I've done here. Click the Open button, then the Open button again, and you should see the landing page come up. Click Customize. As soon as the canvas opens, go to Save, pull down to Save As, and then click Save to put a master copy into your own My Projects area. I need to mention that Design Space has been having some issues opening shared files lately, so if you do have a problem opening this project, check the video description for the latest guidance on this. The black rectangle you see on the canvas is actually made up of hundreds of vertical boxes, so thin and close together that you can't see them. I call this the line pattern block. This particular block is optimized for engraving, but works for foil also. There are separate starter files for different applications because, for instance, if you are drawing with a marker, the lines need to be farther apart than for engraving. If you change the size of the block, you change the spacing between the lines, so you don't want to do that accidentally. For the first example, I'm going to type some text into the starter file and prepare it just as I would for cutting. Changing the font, adjusting and fine-tuning the letter spacing, and sizing it to fit my project. This is a good time to use Save, then Save As, and type in a new name so you don't save over your master. You can see here in the Layers panel that because I ungrouped, each letter is on its own layer. Since we'll be slicing, we have to get those letters all back on one layer, which we do by selecting them all and clicking Weld. I'm going to color the text red so I can see it better against the block. You can rotate the block so the line pattern is not vertical if you like, as long as you still have room for your design to fit completely inside. I'm going to set the angle to 30 because that works well for most images. It can be any angle really, except I don't recommend using 90 degrees for engraving projects. So now the design to be filled is on one layer at the final size we want and it's positioned inside the pattern block where it fits completely. Having verified those things, select your design and shift click or press and hold on an iPad to add the block to the selection. Double check the layers panel to be sure both are selected. We could slice now, but I've found that I get much better results if I enlarge both layers first. So let me show you how to do that. With both layers still selected, read off the size and verify that the lock is on. To keep the math simple, we change the size to its current number multiplied by 10. So in our example, 7.83 inches in width becomes 78.3. The easiest way to change size in the desktop version is to double click in the box to highlight it, then type in the new number, then click return. If you're on mobile, size is under edit. It's not a problem if sizing pushes everything out of view as happens here. Go ahead and click Slice. If your design is complex, it could take a few minutes for this slice operation, so don't be surprised. When it's done, look over at the Layers panel and you'll see four layers labeled Slice Result. Select the one whose thumbnail doesn't look like the others. 
and any two of the three lookalikes, and click Delete. Click on the remaining layer, and you should see a giant stripe-filled version of your text, which is just what we want to see. Now we need to shrink back to the original size. So to do that, we divide the current dimension by 10, type it in, and press Return. In our case, 37.4 becomes 3.74. This preserves the line spacing across the whole process, so it's important. If you've looked at the ruler, you may have noticed that the design is now far away from the corner of our canvas. To quickly fix that, I'm going to change both X and Y boxes to a low number, like 1 or 2. Now when I click on the layer, it will take me back to our familiar home base, and our fill operation is complete. From here, you would change the line type of the filled text based on what you plan to do and then continue to set up projects with other elements and whatever placement technique you like to make sure it engraves, foils, or draws in the right spot on your blank or your project. Our first example used text, but the steps apply to any single layer design. If you can fill it with color, you can fill that same area with lines the same way I showed you. But sometimes we want to fill the opposite parts, so our image looks its best when the lights and darks will end up swapped, such as when engraving or for foiling or drawing on dark paper. Take this image of Winnie the Pooh from the Cricut Library, for instance, which is typical of many coloring book style images. It looks okay engraved with the normal fill, but it looks great when the opposite parts are filled. This is because of the face inversion effect. I'm not going to cover that here, but in the video description I'll link up to other resources where I've taught about it extensively. To fill the opposite parts, we need to start with a negative version of the original. Fortunately for an image like this with a solid black outline all the way around, it only takes a few clicks to get there. For a quick and dirty preview of how Pooh would look rendered light on a dark background, I'm going to change the color to white and drag him against this conveniently located backdrop. Now with him selected, I'm going to click the contour button to bring up the contour window. To invert the image, all it takes is to hide the outermost path. On a mobile device, you have to click the line itself, but on a computer, you can click next to the image or pick from the list on the right. Watch to the left on my screen as I toggle the outer path on again, and back off, then on, then off. Pretty cool, huh? Clicking the X, or anywhere outside the contour window, applies the change. So I'm going to use this contoured negative version of Poo as my starting point, and then repeat the same process we did before. Size the image, angle the block, Position the image over the block and make sure it fits. Select both the image and the block. Enlarge by a factor of 10. Slice. Delete the extras, keeping one of the three lookalikes. Review the result. Reduce the size back down to one-tenth of the enlarged size, and move it back to the home corner. I know it doesn't look right on the screen, but Poo is ready for engraving, or for foiling onto a dark background, per the appropriate settings and steps based on the project and materials that will be used. I hope you enjoyed learning about this design space only method of adding line fill to text or images. I have many more related resources, including a separate video specific to engraving photos and information on filling with other software. All the links are in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And also be sure to join my Cricut Engraving with Clever Someday Facebook group, where you can see lots of examples and get help. As always, I really appreciate you watching, liking, sharing, and commenting. Thanks so much for joining me.